Bonjour les amis, j'espère que vous allez bien. C'est votre frère Patrick Ilunga. Je viens aujourd'hui euh, vous proposer euh, les hommages des fils et filles et femmes de Mutombo Dikembe euh, suite à ces obsèques. Hein. Ce sont des témoignages très choquants. Nous prions que le bon Dieu puisse soutenir cette famille, que le Seigneur puisse guérir leur cœur brisé. Euh, les hommages qui ont été rendus à Kinshasa vont vraiment droit au cœur. C'est vraiment un signe de patriotisme. Dikembe a toujours été là, il a toujours aidé, il a toujours été un homme bien. Il a aidé beaucoup de personnes qui vivent aux états unis il a aidé beaucoup de personnes qui vivent à travers le monde. Aujourd'hui, il est mort. Nous continuerons à penser à lui par ses bienfaits. Nous avons l'hôpital Biombo Mutombo. Nous avons cette école qu'il a construite en Bujimaï. Et à travers le monde, il a aussi construit plusieurs histoires. Il a aidé beaucoup d'orphelinats. Il a beaucoup aidé dans beaucoup d'œuvres de charité. Alors, c'est un témoignage très choquant. Ça fait très mal au cœur de voir ses enfants pleurer. C'est quelque chose qui arrive à tous parce que c'est notre chemin à tous. Veillez suivre le témoignage de sa famille. On revient plus tard. They don't make these things for people my height. Um, all right, it's um, it's pretty awesome and incredible to to be able to sit here and hear former presidents and and VIPs and and my dad's bosses um speak so favorably above him. I'm, I'm applying for a lot of jobs right now. And I, uh, <laughs> um, I just hope in that like three years time or so, whatever, whatever place is dumb enough to hire me is, I hope my bosses look as favorably upon me as, as, as my dads do. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things that I took from my dad. Um, principally is my love for candy. I, uh, and it, it, my mom always gets on me because I'm always eating sweets and I get cavities real easy. And you just, you should have seen her face the last time I walked to doc, into Dr. Lee's office and she got the bill from the dentist. Um, <laughs> I... I, uh, my dad was the was the greatest speechwriter that I that I ever met in my life, and I've had the opportunity to to hear him speak um, so so eloquently on, on on so many different topics over the course of the the 21 years that I had the blessing of sharing with him, and I just remember at his Hall of Fame speech, I was I was crying like a baby, um, and I say all that to say that you know any chance of me preparing words for today was thrown out the window 21 years ago. <laughs> But um, <laughs> there's a couple of funny things I want to share about my dad. Um, after basketball practices at Love It, and um, anybody in the building that's a Love It parent or, or that went to Love It can attest to this, I would be, my, my parents had this rotation schedule where my mom would pick me up from school some days and take me back to the house. My dad would pick me up to school from school some days um, if he was getting off work around the same time that I was getting out of practice. And uh, my dad, Kathy's right, my dad was never on time. He just, <laughs> you know, if, if practice ended at 6.30, my dad would pick me up at 8.45. I <laughs> It's just, that's just the way he operated. Um, and, you know, I, I wish I had had the perspective when I was younger to, to understand why my dad was always late to pick me up. He wasn't, he wasn't late because, you know, he had just, it had just slipped his mind or something. He was, he was late because he was doing the important work of impacting people's lives around the globe. <laughs> And if I, had, if I had had the same perspective that I do now, um, when I was a teenager, I, I would have told him to take all the time that he needed. Um, <laughs> I don't want to run too long here. Um, so 
I would, I, I would like to speak on some special moments that I, had to, that I got to share with my dad ever since I moved back home to Atlanta after graduating college in, uh, in May. And there was one morning when I remember I, I'd heard about this book called Good, Beautiful, and Kind by Pastor Rich Via Das, who's based out of Brooklyn. And I told my mom the night before I left for Barnes & Noble, I said, I really want to go get this book. I've, I heard about it on Instagram, and I've been dying to read it. So the next morning, I was, I was at Barnes & Noble's at 9.59 in the morning, one minute before they opened, and um, I, when I went there, they, they looked around for the book, and they got it for me, and I, I read half the book before I even left the store. And, and when I came home, um, I was, it was a really special moment. I got, to, I got to share some of the beautiful passages of that writing with my dad, and for those of you that aren't familiar with that title, Good, Beautiful, Good and Beautiful and Kind um, is a title adopted from, uh, from a Langston Hughes poem called Tired. And that poem reads, I am so tired of waiting for the world to become good and beautiful and kind. Let us take a knife and cut this world in two and see what worms are eating at the rind. And um, that poem resonated a lot with me, not only, not only a couple months ago, but also today, because just, just hearing the stories of, of my father today, I'm, I'm reminded that my dad really had a hunger to get to the core of things, to get to the core of people, to get to the core of this world. And I truly believe that's what drove him into our hearts. And he had this massive magnetic gravitational pull, and he... He pulled us into his orbit, and, and, and we were just so blessed to get to spend the time that we did with him. Um, and I, and I want to I wanna end, uh, end my words today with just a little bit of the perspective that I've adopted over the, over the course of last night and this morning during these beautiful services. Um, my dad passed away. At age 58, my mother's father, Katumba, from which I bear my name, passed away at age 54. Over the last three years, I've witnessed not only in myself, but I've personally experienced with other people my age. People, are, people my age feel like we're waiting around for a purpose, like we're waiting around for a calling. We're waiting for an important opportunity or something monumental to happen to us to take action so we can step into the lives of others. But I want to remind everybody who's young in the crowd today and even the older folks in here that as long as you've got people around you, there's ways that you can help. But there's ways that you can step in and touch the lives of others. Um, and my dad was a gigantic, beautiful, shining example of that. Um, and I'm going to be thinking about him for the rest of my life. So I love all of you guys. Thank you for coming out today. Um, and I'll leave the rest to my beautiful sister and my handsome brother, JJ. Sorry, Ryan's a bit taller than me. I want to thank Esai for hosting us. Um, and I want to thank everybody for coming out, friends, family, associates. Um, as it says on the screen, my name is Jean-Jacques Matumbo. And I want to clarify, my name is Jean-Jacques Dikembe Matumbo Jr. And... And that's something I've grappled with and struggled with my entire life, having to live up to that name. Uh, I didn't prepare words today because I wanted to speak from the heart, but we are all witnesses to the life of Dikembe Mutombo and his greatness and what that means to all of us. He's impacted us in some way. 
my father passed on September 30th. And two years ago, September 30th was my last day of an internship, and it was the last day of my life where ignorance was bliss. My father was with my mother in Japan, and when he came home, and my mom told me, Jean-Jacques, we're going to the hospital with your father. That was the last time I saw my father walk without any support in my life. But my father was resilient. Anybody who knows Dikembe knows that he was not going to give up. I saw him go to physical therapy. I took him to physical therapy, whether it was the replacement of a catheter, or there was screening for cancer. All of those things I witnessed. I used to have dreams that I would see my father walk again. I never saw my father walk again. When people would visit my father, they knew that he was eager to get back out into the world. He would ask about the travels they'd been on, and when he could join, and he was eager to work. But he didn't get to witness any of the work that he had started anymore, and he will no longer be able to witness it. But we all get to witness it, and we have witnessed it. President Bill Clinton is a witness. Masai Ujiri is a witness. My mother, Rose Matumbo, is a witness. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver is a witness. Georgetown teammate Alonzo Mourning is a witness. Georgetown coach John Thompson was a witness. President Kennedy says something in his uh, inaugural address saying, God's work on earth must truly be our own. And it's something that always stood out to me because I believe that's what my father embodied, that he tried to actualize positive change in this world. In the 2000s, I would go visit my dad in Houston because we were living in Philadelphia, and he would have a miniature model of what would become the Biamba Marie Matumbo Hospital. In 2015 and 2016, I got to see that model in real life. He actualized his ideas. God's work on earth did come to life. And when my father was sick, I was speaking to him in the room once. There was a hospital bed beside the bed that he used to sleep on. And uh, we were having a private conversation, and I just was talking about Africa and all the things that we could do in this world and how we can make it better. And my father just looked at me and said, do you think I've done that? And I think we all know the answer that he has done that. Thank you to everybody for coming. Both my brothers are much taller than me. On behalf of my family, I just want to say thank you to Everybody who has come from all over the city, the country, and the world to celebrate the life and legacy of my dad, Dikembe Mutombo. We have heard a lot about who my dad was and what he meant to so many people this weekend. He was larger than life, a giant an icon, a legend. We have heard about his boundless generosity, his inspirational spirit, his genius, and how he was so willing to take care of others before himself. And I thank you for sharing all those stories. And I hope now for a moment You'll let me share the perspective and memories from a certified, as my family will let you know, daddy's girl. 
For as long as I can remember, people have always asked me what it's like to have a famous dad. And over the years, my answers have changed depending on my age or even the person I was talking to, to even something as small as my pops and I's last conversation. So here's the truth. My daddy was my best friend. As the eldest and the only girl, so much of my heart belonged to him. I looked forward to spending the majority of my life with my dad, looking out for me. I imagined him walking me down the aisle or holding his infant grandchildren with one hand. He was meant to just be one call away. He was going to cheer me on when I won my first trial and visit me when I purchased my first home. My pops was my superhero. He was already an NBA superstar by the time I came along and with adoring fans calling him Mount Matumbo and gesturing back to him the infamous, no, 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 not in my house. And though I was the firstborn, he and my mom raised me alongside my four older cousins, Nancy, Reagan, Perla, and Haruna, who I grew up proudly calling my brothers and sisters. So from the very start, between our packed house and the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of basketball fans around the world, I've had to share my dad. And as a kid, this made me jealous. I've always known my dad was this amazing and important person. And I always resented the fact that he shared his awesomeness with so many people around the world so freely. But today, at 27 years old, and seeing the sheer amount of people who have come to celebrate him, I can firmly say that sharing my dad with you has been the honor of my life. For better and for worse, my dad loved, and I mean loved, being Dikembe Mutombo. <laughs> <laughs> he loved being a husband, a father, a brother, an uncle, a tonton, a friend, and an all-around global citizen. He understood the profound privilege that his career and success gave him and that that power came with immense responsibility. And yes, I'm quoting Spider-Man. <laughs> and yet each day, he woke up and chose to be the Dikembe Mutombo we all knew and love. So who was he? For me, he was that Congolese kid with a knack for mathematics, whose basketball journey started with the help of an encouraging older brother and an eager college coach. He was the cheering dad with the booming, raspy voice in the bleachers yelling at us to rebound, box out, secure the ball. <laughs> he was the considerate tall guy at the back of the chapel, supporting his kids' voice recitals in such a way that wouldn't block the other parents' view. He's the goofy dude that misplaced four brand new iPhones on Christmas Day. 
He was the Kembe Mutombo, the dancer, the music lover, the bad picture taker, <laughs> the world traveler, the family movie night goer, the here's a little something sneaky money giver, the so what are you studying now interrogator, the hospital and school builder. He was our father, our gift, our Superman. And he was the best girl dad I could ever ask for. Pops, I miss you. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. I'm sorry for all the times I did not call or text you back. And every other time I made you worry. I know there are promises I made that I wasn't able to deliver before you left us. But I promise to keep working for you and for mommy and for JJ and Ryan. I love you to the moon and back a thousand times. Rest in peace. Wow, I have uh, voiced a lot if I should say something or if I shouldn't. But uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you. Thank you to each one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come celebrate ongoing with my husband. I was proud to call him my husband. I know that uh, nowadays for some women to stand publicly, to call the spouse my husband could come across as a sign of weakness. For me, I was proud to be Dikembe Mutombo wife. And I'm standing before you, I'm proud. At the time, to be called Mrs. Mutombo was scaring me because of who he was, the impact he had on people's lives, what he stands for and what he believes was terrifying. To be Mrs. Mutombo, it was a burden. I have to live and stand up to that name. So I want to talk a little bit about the Dikembe Mutombo, my husband, as I call him Jean-Jacques, for the last two years of his life. What I see in my husband, what I learned from my husband, is this. Sometimes, in time of difficulties, you do not know what will sustain you. And what sustained my husband in these last two years, it is his faith. His faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That faith that we deeply share and we share with our family, sustain him and sustain me and sustain our family. So to my children, Kerry, Jean-Jacques, and Ryan, when Dikembe got diagnosed in October of 2022, our oldest daughter, Kerry, was in Washington, D.C., finishing up law school. Ryan was in Washington, D.C. as well at Georgetown University. My son, Jean-Jacques, our middle son, was home with me. And let me tell you that this young man, my son, our middle child, Jean-Jacques Dikembe Mutombo, Jr., stood with me. He held me up. I was scared. I was terrified. 
and I realized that God is amazing God the way he works up things. Jean-Jacques was supposed to be at Columbia University in New York, but somehow things play out that he was home. That Columbia University didn't work out for him, so he came home. And I come to understand the purpose why he came home, why God allowed him to be home. And that, that very, very first year, the doctor appointment, the therapy, always up to 10 days before Dikembe death, he was continuously doing a physical therapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy. Literally twice a week. Never give up. A resilient man. If I'm standing before you and telling you that 10 days prior to his death, Dikembe Mutombo was in a bike, sitting in a wheelchair, pedaling five miles. You'll not believe it. So he was a strong, he was determined. But then in the last two years, we've had a lot of conversation. And I will ask him, honey, if God decided to call you home, how would you want to be remembered? And the answer was as simple as this. As a man who came and lived and made an impact. And uh, everything I've heard yesterday and today, it really, really speak and answer that question for him, that he came and lived and made an impact. Our faith together in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sustain us in the last two years and will continue to sustain us. As um, months and days goes on into his disease, I start becoming a little bit frustrated because we're doing a therapy after therapy after therapy, and to some extent, it will get a little bit better, and then we'll take a few steps back. So I started becoming a little bit frustrated. Frustrated with myself, with God, wondering what was happening. But one day, I asked him, and that's what I want to leave with all of you. I asked him, I say, oh my gosh, your honey, how do you feel? Do you think therapy is helping you? He said, yes, it's helping me. And then he went on to say something that I almost forget. And that will help me to carry on. And he said this one day. He said, Rose, you know what? With God, you have to be patient. And that's what I would tell all of you. Sometimes when facing a trial and tribulation, when going through difficult time, when you're looking ahead with uncertainty, you don't know the road you are on will take you. Sometimes just be patient and head on to your faith, hold on in trusting God and be patient. And God in his way, mighty way, he will show up. So thank you everybody for taking your time, for sharing with us. Honey, I will love, I will miss our prayer time. I'll miss our worship time. These last two years, we have prayed together then never before in almost, almost three years of my marriage. So to all of you, thank you for loving Jean-Jacques Dikembe Mutombo. Thank you for supporting our family. To all the speaker, I want to say thank you. Mr. Former President, thank you. Mrs. McCain, thank you. Commissioner Silver, Kathy, everybody who came and shared with us. I say thank you. Thank you for loving the Kembe Mutombo. Thank you for supporting our family. And thank you for being a patient in these last two years. There's so many of you who wanted to visit. Uh, unfortunately, I did become not selfish because I want to. I just have to follow all the requirements by doctors. Uh, so for those who somehow feel a certain way, I just I want to apologize. But uh, thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. C'est vraiment trop uh, émotionnel. 
ça ne peut pas supporter. Pour ceux qui ne comprennent pas l'anglais, les enfants ont donné le témoignage de leur papa. Et la femme également. Donc, c'est tout. C'est tout ce qu'on a à faire dans cette vidéo. Ce sont des personnes qui ont partagé la vie ensemble le long de, euh, de leur chemin. Donc, euh, depuis qu'ils s'étaient mariés, par exemple, à sa femme, à Marose Mutombo. Ils ont eu des enfants ensemble et ils ont témoigné ce qu'a été Dikembe Mutombo. Restez branchés pour la suite. Merci beaucoup.